Hello there, and thanks for joining me. I'm digital artist Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing a WebGL application called Fluid Paint by David Lee. This is available at david.li slash paint, and it's a web-based application that lets you paint using Fluid Paint Dynamics. So you can see if I hover my pen over the screen here, you can see these little bristles that follow my brush. And if I paint a stroke, those bristles contain paint, and the paint is kind of fluid and smudges around and drips and flows, and it has a nice three-dimensional impasto effect. The controls are pretty minimal. They're over here on the left. And depending on how fast your computer is, you can change the quality here. I'm gonna go ahead and set mine to high. And that'll control the quality of the paint. You can take some other colors here, and put those in, and you can see how this is working. Now I have control over the color mode. I can use natural color, or I can use digital color. Digital color tends to be a bit brighter, and you can see it actually changed the colors there when I switched from natural to digital. Why it does that, I don't know. But natural colors are going to be more like traditional paint colors, and digital colors will be just about any color you want to choose. You can change the paint fluidity. For example, if I want the paint not to move very much and to be more dry and not very fluid, I can lower the fluidity, or I can increase it if I want it to flow and smudge and drip a lot. I can control the bristle count if I want there to be very few bristles, like so, or I can increase it and I can have a lot of bristles. I also have control over the brush size. I can make the brush very small, or I can make it very large. And then of course I can choose the paint color using the hue ring here and the saturation value cube. And I can also control the opacity of the paint with the slider here. If I want it to be very thin and transparent, I can do that. Or if I want it to be very thick, I can do that. And then there's undos and redos. Or if you want, you can just clear your canvas. There's also shortcuts down here in the bottom left. You can scroll to change the size of your brush, but unfortunately for me, I don't have a mouse that has a scroll wheel on it, so I have to manually change my brush size over here, which is really tedious and actually takes the fun out of painting with this application. Unfortunately, it doesn't support Wacom pen pressure, so I can't control the brush size with pen pressure either. It would be really nice if there was a keyboard shortcut instead of the scroll wheel to be able to resize the brush. That would make this a lot more usable. You can hold spacebar and you can pan your canvas like so, and you can resize the canvas using the edges here. You can drag. The only problem with that is if I paint here and I paint off the canvas and then I accidentally drag the edge here, which can happen if I'm painting over here near the edge and I accidentally lift up and click over here, I'll drag that edge, and that happened to me constantly while I was painting with this application. If you accidentally dragged it in and cut off some of your canvas, and then tried to fix it, whatever you cut off is permanently cut off. So that's definitely a feature that I don't like. You should be able to lock the canvas size and not accidentally move it. So that's how to use this little program in a nutshell, but I want to share some more thoughts that I have on this application. I have to admit this thick paint effect is really nice and very realistic. I really like fluid paint technology and I wish it were in applications like Corel Painter and Photoshop. Unfortunately, it's not. It's limited to some very niche applications like Rebel and Expressy. But seeing all these applications dealing with fluid paint is really an indicator that fluid paint is probably going to be something that's going to be mainstream in the near future in many of the most popular art applications. Unfortunately, the tools in this application are way too limited. There are the basics here. I'm sure if you had a lot of patience, you could make a really nice detailed painting with this little app. And you can, of course, save your work. You can click on the Save button, and then you can save your painting as a PNG. But it's lacking a lot of the tools that something like Corel Painter, Photoshop, or Krita would have that allow you to do more with your artwork. And keep in mind that Photoshop and Corel Painter have been around like 20 years or maybe more than that, and so they've had a lot of time to really perfect the art of digital painting. It's not just about looking realistic, it's also about being a practical application that professionals can use on a daily basis. And so you need a lot of the transformation tools and layers and all kinds of different things. Some people like a minimalist interface, but personally I don't. As I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have pen pressure support, and if it did that would be really nice. Another issue I have with the brush is that it doesn't support dabbing. I can dab, but I'm dabbing with the side of my bristles, which looks weird. If you were dabbing with a real paintbrush, you'd get a more circular dab, which would be the ends of the bristles rather than the sides. It would also be nice if it supported pen tilt. For example, if I tilted my pen, to the side, I'd paint with the side of my bristles, whereas if it were upright, I'd be painting with the ends of the bristles. But again, this is a web-based application. It's not a full-blown app for your computer, and if it were, maybe it would have those features. Who knows? 
I also mentioned when I was playing around with this that it is kind of annoying to have to resize your brush using the slider. I know there is a shortcut if you have a mouse that has a scroll wheel, but I don't. So for me, it's really tedious to have to keep changing the brush size. What would be nice is if it had several different brush size presets like you would in traditional painting. You'd have a medium brush and a fine brush and a thick brush and so on. So that would make sizing the brush much easier than using the slider. So overall, it's a fun little application to play around with. And again, it is really nice to see that fluid paint dynamics are becoming a little more mainstream in some of the niche applications. Hopefully we'll see them in something like Corel Painter or Photoshop or Krita very soon. But would I use this application on a day-to-day -day basis? Probably not because, again, it's lacking a lot of the tools that I find very valuable when I'm creating digital art. So if you're interested in playing around with this application, go over to david.li slash paint and give it a try. If you like this video, take a quick second to click the like button. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more digital art videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.